this is Wendy. I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Northern California, and I am here today to just kind of hang out and stamp. Um, I actually have been doing these lives all week. I'm going to be continuing to do them till June 1st because our brand new catalog with Stampin' Up! is launching then. So I'm trying to show off some of the new products and do a little creating and stamping and crafting with um, some of the new stuff so you can see what you want on your wish list. Speaking of wish lists, I do have a really fun um, challenge going on that will happen from June 1st to June 15th where you can print a wish list from me off of my blog and um, fill it out and then take a picture of it and email it to me, text it to me, message it to me through Facebook or whatever, and you'll be entered to win a fun giveaway that I'll do on June 16th. So um, there's that. And then also I have a fun paper share going on right now as well. So if you're interested in any of those things, um, I certainly will be checking the comments and letting you know. Hi Brianna, nice to see you here. So I'm gonna get started with some stamping because that's really what you all came to see, right? Hopefully um, everything comes in okay. I've been having a little trouble with my camera being um, going out of focus. So I've just got a piece of four and a quarter by five and a half inch uh, shimmering white cardstock here. <clears throat> and for those of you that follow me, you know I'm suffering with allergies really bad right now um so if I cough a lot or I'm clearing my throat that's why I do have my nice warm cup of coffee here to help soothe my voice since I'll be doing a lot of talking it is rainy here today which is unusual for uh, Northern California this time of the year but I'm actually not a huge fan of the rain but right now I'm loving it because I'm hoping it knocks down some of those um, pollens that are, I don't even know if that's a thing. Maybe you guys can let me know. Um, but in my head, I think if it's raining and water's coming from the sky and landing on the trees, it's like helping knock down all that pollen and all the stuff in the air that's floating around. <coughs> that could be totally false. I just, that's how in Wendy's head it would work. Okay, so I've got my shimmery white cardstock here. And I am using two inch strip removable labeling tape or post-it note tape. You can get this on Amazon. Just Google post-it note tape and lots of options will come up. It's a great tool to use for crafting. I am using my grid paper to line up. So you can see here that I've got it cornered into the grid really well. I'm gonna go down three squares and line this up on each end and then put down my post-it note tape. Then I'm gonna come in with another piece. <coughs> Excuse me. And I'm gonna come to this one. I didn't even count, I'm just kind of eyeballing how thick I want this area. I actually think I want it a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna pull this back up. Yeah, that's better. Let's go. Let's go with this. So I've not made this card before. I'm totally uh, winging it and just making something for fun. Um, I do have a person in mind that I wanna give this to, but I, you know, it'll depend on how it turns out. If it's crap, then we won't, I won't give it to her. <laughs> so you're gonna find out if it turns out. So this is a thing. All of my videos on YouTube and everything, they're very polished, right? So it deletes. I edit out all my mistakes or me trying something and it not working or I pre-make a card and then I show it to you guys. Today I am just going for it. I'm just making something and we'll just see how it turns out. Okay, um, so I'm going to read some comments here. Sandra says, heck yeah, that's a real thing. So yay, that's great. Maybe by like tomorrow or Friday some of this congestion and itchy throat will clear away. Donna, or Diana says, yes, Wendy, the pollen is cleared from the leaves, etc., by the rain, but sorry to say there will be more until the plants quit producing. <laughs> That's not what I wanted to hear. Uh, Karen said, I've said it before, but anyone new today, Wendy's paper share is truly the best. Ah, oh, thanks, Karen. Uh, Tiffany says, hello. Okay. <coughs> 
Linda says it won't be crap. Linda, listen here. You never know. You never know. So I'm going to use Lily Pad Lake and Lakeside Framelits. These are brand new from Stampin' Up. Um, I'm going to be honest. I saw them, and at first I was like, that's some straight ugly stamps right there, and I'm never going to use that. But my daughter saw it and said, Mom, that looks like the sea egrets and the herrings that we have where we live. And I was like, oh. So then, of course, I wanted it because my kid, like, related it to where we live and made it all sweet and cute. So then I got it. And then I, I do really like the sentiments. Be calm and leave it to God. I feel like I need that blown up and put, like, life size on my wall. Thinking of you with loving thoughts and prayers. To see far is one thing. Going there is another. Love that. And then congratulations. So... Um, and then I've got the framelits here. So I'm going to start with some ink blending. This is what I use for my ink blending. Um, this is not Stampin' Up! product, so there's my disclaimer on that. Um, a lot of people would be very disappointed in me, but um, I love these blending tools. So you can get these on Amazon. It's a Tim Holtz blending tool. It's a little <coughs> wood piece. It keeps your fingers clean. It's comfortable to hold and it blends fairly nice. Um, actually, this, the sponges that are saturated with ink blend better. So the older the sponge, the better it blends. So that's why I just um, hang on to them all here and try to label them. I don't have a good labeling system. But I'm gonna use Coastal Cabana. Welcome back, Coastal Cabana. Um, so Karen says, since you gave your ancient dinosaur grandfather his dinosaur card. Are you making one for your antiquated grandmother? Oh, that's very sweet. But no, my grandma actually passed away last year. Um, it, although she would have loved this card because she loved birds, but she passed away in January of last year. And my grandma and my grandpa were married for 68, 68 years because this year would be So let me think. Yeah. So they made it to their 68th wedding anniversary because this year would be 70 years. So um, he's 94. And um, he's doing great. Okay. So I'm going to start with my blending. I'm using an extremely light hand. So you all are going to see how painfully slow. I feel like I'm yelling at you. Take it down, Wendy. Take it down a notch. You're going to see how painfully slow ink blending is. Because when I do a video, I speed all this up. Or I cut it out altogether. Because I figure you don't need to see all that. It takes too long. But today you're going to see it, baby. You're getting the full gamut. So I'm making this card for somebody specific, but I'm also making it for um, a challenge on Global Design Project. So Global Design Project has several of my friends who are designers and one of my good buddies, Brian King, who I love, um, he kind of, I, I don't know if he heads it up, but he has a lot to do with the Global Design Project. And <clears throat> we were talking on the phone the other day, and I said, I wanna be a designer on Global Design Project. And he said, well, you don't ever play along. So, no. That's what he said to me, could you believe that? He's right though, I never play along. So I'm gonna surprise him and play along by submitting this card as my, my card for the thing for the challenge. I'll show you the challenge here in just a second. So you can play along with Global Design Project also by going to globaldesignproject.com or is it .blogspot.com. So you see how long this is taking, right? Are you guys getting this? Okay, so Yvonne says, hi Wendy, I'm finally catching you live. I'm watching from California. Yay, Southern California. Uh, Linda says, I love the sentiments. 
yes, Karen, my ears are, well, they're actually not stopped up right now, but they do kind of come in and out getting plugged. I call them, call it getting plugged. Okay, so there is my Coastal Cabana ink blended background. So you can see here, this took me quite a little bit here, but you can see how beautiful it is when you take the time to really blend evenly. I've got a little bit of darker areas right here, which I'm not crazy about, because that's probably because I just pushed too hard right there. But that's okay, because I'm gonna add some other stuff to this that's gonna kind of um, even that texture out. So originally my thought was to do this color and then do these colors on the other sides. I've just decided not to do that because it's not gonna turn out in my head it's not going to turn out on the card the way it is in my head. So, and I just know that from experience, just from stamping for a really long time. So I think what I'm going to do is add a little bit of depth to this color by adding in some Bermuda Bay. And this could totally backfire on me. So pray for me. Is everybody praying? Let's hope this doesn't backfire because that'll be the pits. But listen, hell or high water, we're finishing this card. So there it is. Okay, so I think this is Bermuda Bay, actually. Oh, I think it's gonna be all right, let me see. Yeah. So I always, <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. Okay, so Adam says, um, I 100% agree. The more ink in the sponge, the easier it blends. So true, so true. It just gets, it's nice and saturated and it just blends really beautifully. Um, so this color, um, Mona, is Coastal Cabana. It will be available again on uh, June 1st, okay? So let's see here. We're gonna go in and I'm just gonna darken the bottom of this is the goal. So. Here's a trick with wonderful ink blending. And this is something I learned from Laura Basson. She's an amazing crafter on YouTube. Absolutely love watching her stuff. She's just incredible. And um, she does kind of the same thing over and over and over again in different variations. She loves rainbow patterns, loves ink blending, which I understand why it's such a super fun technique. So I'm just going over this again and again, but my hand is putting almost zero pressure on this sponge. That is the key to beautiful ink blending. If you push down, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get these weird, see that? That's me pushing hard. So if you push down hard, you're gonna get these weird tones and and light and dark spots and you know all kinds of stuff okay so now I'm gonna go back in with my coastal cabana again barely any pressure happening here but I just want a really soft blend in between these two colors and I feel like I'm getting exactly the results I wanted which is so awesome since I'm live I swear to you I didn't plan this ahead of time which is the best part in my book. So here's a tip. I will tell you this. Um, when you're ink blending, uh, if you blend too much on these papers or if you get them wet, they will soak through. So you do have to be mindful of that. You don't want to saturate your uh, mask too much because it will bleed through. Hopefully it hasn't done that here. <coughs> Okay, so let's close these up and get them out of the way. And this is my favorite part, it's like Christmas. Christmas, you know what? Hmm, I have an idea, but I'm not sure it'll work, so I'm not gonna try it yet. So we're gonna remove the mask. And then you have this gorgeous center area that is beautifully ink blended. 
on my shimmery white cardstock. Isn't that beautiful? And it's just perfect. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some water, because this is another fave technique of mine. I gotta get a paper towel. Okay, we've been at this 15 minutes. I'm gonna try to finish this in the next 15. Okay, Donna says, hi Wendy, watching from Australia. I have just joined, what are you making? I will tell you in a minute. I'm just making a card, Donna. Tiffany says, when do you have to be a, a demonstrator to be in your Facebook group? Yes, to be in my exclusive team Facebook group, you have to be a demonstrator, that is correct. Yes, Fran says, that's a great question, Fran. Is there a difference between using daubers, sponges, and the tool I'm using? Yes, so let me show you. I'm gonna be quick about this. But these are our classic Stampin' Up! sponges. <coughs> what I like for these is I cut them into fours. So I cut them in half two ways and I use them like this. And I really love to use these on um, projects where I'm like inking the edges of something or I'm adding a little texture, things like that. But they don't give the most smooth blend. These give a really, really smooth blend if you use a very light hand. And like I said, <coughs> if this sponge is nice and saturated with ink, it works even better. These are for a diff different techniques altogether. You would not use these for ink blending. Um, you would have to be like super pro, I guess, to, to use these. I never recommend that. These you can do, I actually, on my Instagram, I just did a video um, where you can daub ink onto the back of a stamp, different colors of ink, and then stamp it. So that's kind of, you can do different techniques with these. So there is a purpose for all three of these items in your life, just so you know. Okay. Onwards and upwards. I want to put some ink or some water splatters on here. So I'm just going to go for it. I'm scared. I'm always scared that I'm gonna mess something up. And then I'm gonna really quickly daub off the water because that gets the ink. See that? It pulls that ink back up out. You have to use water soluble inks to do this technique. So can you see there where it's taken the ink right back off? So that's fun. Okay, so I'm gonna do just a little bit more of that. So this is definitely not what I would consider like a quick and cute card. This is a fun, relaxing in your craft room, rainy outside technique, okay? This is like, I'm gonna spend some time playing and making a fun card and getting inky and messy. This is not what I would call a card that's like, uh-oh, I'm running out the door to a graduation party and I need a card. <coughs> nope, this isn't the one for that. Okay, so let's see. I'm reading comments. Uh, Donna says, are your allergies getting better? I am suffering like you here in Australia. You know, each day I wake up and I'm like, ooh, I think they're getting better. And then by the time I go outside and do stuff, I'm all agitated again. Wendy, if you reuse that mask, do you have to keep using the same color or could you mask and blend with another color? That is a great question, Karen. So um, it depends. <coughs> if you're using darker colors to blend, yeah, you could probably keep using the same mask. But if you were to decide, oh, I think I'm gonna blend with some yellows and oranges, no, you wouldn't wanna use the same mask because it will pick up that ink and pull it in. So um, if I was doing purples or blues or something like that, I could go ahead and keep using those masks. Um, but I just went ahead and threw them away because I'm not going to be doing that. So give me a second here. Hmm. Okay. <clears throat> okay, Fran says, daubers are what I have, so that must be why I do not have luck blending. That is why, Fran, you've gotta get some sponges. Sponges will help. You can use these 
but for years I just used these because it was such a cheaper option so try it with these if you don't like that get some of these these you can get on Amazon they are Tim Holtz uh, blending to I don't know something like that just put in Tim Holtz um, mini blending tool and it'll probably come up um, <clears throat> Donna says I use these jumbo daubers and that works great for me um, that's cool great technique what was the blending tool okay just said that all right okay so we're all caught up I'm gonna set this aside because I don't know what else I want to do to this I feel like I want to do something else but I don't know what so I'm just gonna set that part aside while we work on the other pieces so I've got my little images here and I frankly do not know what I'm gonna use so because of that I am just going to stamp them all if I had my I don't have my stamp apparatus right here <coughs> otherwise I would use that what I do know is that I'm gonna want to color these with alcohol markers so that means I need to use my trusty memento ink and you know what this is not the right paper let me get up let me get the right paper I'm coming right back I promise I have not abandoned you I have not forsaken you okay so I'm gonna use my Copics which again not a Stampin' Up product I know I'm gonna get bashed um but I haven't used my Copics in a while and I start they start to get lonely is what happens to them they get lonely and they feel abandoned and they're expensive and my husband made me promise when I bought them that I would use them he really didn't that's a that's a lie but I it sounded good didn't it all right so let's get all this stuff stamped and here's what I do so here's some little behind the scenes stuff oh sometimes I stamp four or five of something two or three four or five whatever who's counting because I am not a fantastic Copic marker colorer, colorer, -er -er -er. and sometimes I like to try blender pens and Copics to see like which ones I'm gonna like better. Not blender pens, blends, Stampin' Blends. Let me grab my chair, I need to sit down. I like to sit down to color. There's a seed on my chair, that's weird. Okay, here we go. Yes, he will appreciate that I'm using them. Okay, I'm gonna lower this down just a little bit because I'm in my chair now. <clears throat> and um, yeah, so you always, whenever you're using Copics or blends, you always want some paper underneath whatever you're coloring on because <clears throat> the ink will soak through and it needs somewhere to go. If it doesn't have somewhere to go, it's going to soak back up and bleed out on your paper. So that's a little tip for you. So let's get Coper, Copic marker friendly here. I'm just going to use YG06. I hope this is not totally boring. I'm trying to not take too terribly long with this video. But I kind of just wanted a hangout session with you guys. So there's that. Okay. So I'm going to wait. I'm going to do this. Okay. So I'm going to put my darker green around the lily. As again, as I said, I am no Copic marker genius. Okay. So just so you know ahead of time. Don't be looking at my stuff and thinking, well, she should be able to do better than that because I can't. Okay, I'm going to use RV10 and put some pink just kind of in the bottom of these because aren't lilies, aren't the lily pad, they, they're kind of white, aren't they? I should, so normally what I would do is I would Google a picture of this, but 
<coughs> my phone's above me videoing this and my iPad's in front of me videoing me. <coughs> okay, so um, Renee says, you are a Copic master. Oh my God, you are so kind, Renee, because that's not true. Renee says, you helped me to brave alcohol markers starting with the blends. So I have to say, that is my advice to people. I'm going to grab them. My advice to people is always start with these. If you don't have any alcohol markers, <clears throat> then blends, we're just going to do a comparison. Blends are your gateway drug, okay, into alcohol marker freedom. So if you, this is a blend, this is a, what is it, pink pirouette, the dark one. Um, which I actually don't, I would do that lighter, but it's okay. So, um, they are your gateway drug. So if you're wanting to start using alcohol markers, a great place to start. Oh, I'm going to need to move that because it's made a, a horrible shadow. A great place to start is with the blends. So you're gonna see here the difference in colors. So here's my number one <coughs> reason for liking ha to have the Copics is that there's only one green offered in the blends, which is Old Olive, which is great if I'm coloring Shrek or you know Moss. Not so great for a lily pad. Just I'm just saying. But it will get you by, right? It's not horrible. It's not this, but it's not horrible. Okay, so there's that. Now, <coughs> where we live, there are... Um, That's true. Linda says you don't always have to color things realistically. Use whatever makes you happy. You know, Linda, my heart understands that, but my brain, that logical side of my brain that says a lily pad is green, still makes me color a lily pad green. So I have problems. Uh, I'm the first to admit it. Okay, so we are going to color this as a beautiful sunshine an orangey yellowy sunshine this marker is almost dry I need to set it aside that's Y11 and then I'm going to I don't even know how I'm gonna color this let me see okay we're gonna go darker on this one side eh, I'm just gonna leave a highlight all right and again, this is where I would be Googling some ideas for how to color a sunshine. So that's, I mean, that's really part of my trick of my trade is that I just Google images. I Google photos, I Google um, <coughs> everything. Then I'm gonna go back in with my lightest color. Okay, so this one's pretty. It's got some dimension, but I'm not crazy about it. So let's go, let's try to do something even darker. So I've got, I'm gonna use some, some YR action here. Um, Maggie. I don't know, what's this? YR02. Let's use this one and see what we get. Ew, yay. Kind of a peachy, orangey color. <clears throat> you guys are going to have to vote on your favorite. Your favorite one. Maybe, what was that? YR16? Let's go YR18 and even go a little bit deeper and darker. Uh, 
I'm not digging this. See, this is why you have to play. You have to just play and have fun and just see what's going to work for you. Okay, so then there's another way to just keep this super simple, which is to take my blends. This is my Daffodil Delight. And I'm going to come in with the light pumpkin pie, just a streak of it, and then blend it out. So there's that one. And then let's even go easier, huh? Check this out. Let's go super easy. This is nice, deep pumpkin pie orangey so now do you understand the difference here between the copics and the blends the blends take all the guesswork out of coloring you literally have a light and a dark there is nothing else so <clears throat> you don't have to be thinking oh my god i don't know am i you know is it the right thing should i be using this should i be using that i don't know so you're just so simple with just these Okay, so now I need to color my herring or egret. So I'm going to use my warm grays in my blends to color this one up here. So we're going to start. So a good rule of thumb is if you are coloring something alive, then you wanna use a warm gray. If you're coloring something dead or that doesn't have any life to it, like a, a piece of metal, um, you wanna use a cool gray. Okay, so there's um, W1. This is W3. Now, I actually want this egret or, or herring to be as close to this color as I can get it. However, he's going to look more that color if I do some shading. So that's what I'm gonna do here, is I'm just gonna go in and I'm gonna create some shading on some different parts of his body that would naturally have some shading, like underneath him. Okay, so now I'm going to go to my W5. And one of the things that I have learned is adding a lot of shading is very scary because you always think, oh my gosh, I'm going to mess it up. <coughs> I'm going to mess it up because I'm going to go too dark and then it's not going to be what I want. So, uh, one of the things I've learned about that is that yes, there is such thing as going too dark. You can get it too dark. But I've also learned that actually, the more contrast it is, the more stuff will pop. So, Okay, so now I'm gonna go back through with my other and shade this all out. W3. Oh, one of the things I wanted to mention is I am using, um, this is not Stampin' Up! cardstock for this coloring. This is a cardstock that is specially made for alcohol markers so that it will absorb the, all this ink and allow it to move around without it 
bleeding all over the place. So FYI on that. You can totally use Stampin' Up! cardstock. Um, but I lay down so much ink that it will cause stuff to bleed. So right here you can see I went out of the lines on accident. So I'm just going to come in with my color lifter, it's, which it's not really a color lifter. It's a, um, it pushes the color back in. Okay. And then I've just got a little area here that I don't like. So I'm going to fix that real quick. Um, I'm not sure how I, it's like I got it too dark right there. Okay, that's better. So that is my, my herring. And so now we just need to do the boats. Although, I don't think I'm going to use them. But I'm worried if I don't color them, I'll want to use them and then I won't have colored them. So let's see. Oh, you know what? Let's do the other herring really quick. This is my light smoky slate. So you can see how much darker this ink is. So I just didn't want my herring to be this dark. It's a little too dark for me. Okay. I could go in with my dark one though and do some shading, which I'm going to do. It doesn't look bad, certainly. It just wasn't what I'm going for. Okay, so there's my herring in with the blends, but I'm just gonna soften it back out a little bit. Okay, so there's that. So I feel like it would go nice with this color family would be maybe some red on the boat. Um, I don't know, sails are usually white, aren't they? Maybe the, the bottoms of the boats are brown. Actually, I guess they're, I guess sailboats have all kinds of pretty. So this is what happens to me. I'm not sure what color to do. So now I'm stressed out about it. This is very common for me because I'm trying to think of my background and complementary colors. And now I'm worried that I'm going to mess it up or that it's going to be stupid looking. And, and so that is what happens to me. And so then that stresses me out. And so I start, eh, I don't know what to do. Because I feel like I get too many colors happening. So I'm just going to stop there. Unless you guys have a, um, this is not an egret. It's a herring. So we have herrings here that are gray and egrets that are white. So Donna, Donna just commented and said egrets are usually white. They are white. You are right. But this is a herring. It might be an egret. I'm just saying they look identical except for their color to me. Okay. I am going to cut these out. Let's do that. Because we are at 40 minutes working on this. Ridiculous is what that is. I know you're all are probably thinking, get it done, lady. Come on. Shut up. Quit the talking. Okay. My trusty post-it note tape. I don't even know if I'm going to use all these pieces, but I wanted to cut them and color them anyway.
I shouldn't even cut these boats out. They're hideous. I don't like them. Okay, and then I'm going to pick my favorite sunshine, which I think for me is probably... I don't know. I, I'm going to go with this one. All right. I know, Debbie. Debbie says, that's why I follow somebody else's ideas and, and use the colors they use. That's normally what I do. I would have Googled a whole bunch of ideas for colors, but I, my all of my stuff that I could Google with is being used to film, so. <clears throat> okay. Let's look at all these beautiful little die cuts. I love die cutting. <clears throat> there is something about die cutting a shape out that gives me ultimate happiness. Oh, look, I didn't get it quite right. Eh, I hate that. Oh, well, what you gonna do? Okay, there's that. All right, so now we've got our pieces. And now I have to decide what I'm going to do with them all. Uh-oh. There we go. Hopefully, yep, it froze my... Hopefully that comes back and I unfreeze. Ah. Sorry, you guys. I'm hoping it will come back on here. Let, let me turn it off. Um, let's see. You move. There I am. Cameras. My, my family has amazing timing. I'll tell you that. Okay. Let's see here if we can get this going again. Can you guys still see me and hear me? I'm hoping. Okay. Oh. Okay. All right. Back to our beautiful card. Can you guys still see me and hear me? All right. So I'm hoping you can. I'm trying to decide how I want to put all this on here. I don't think, I don't think I want to do the boats. What do you guys think? I think no boats. Do you think no boats? I think the boats are too much. They're just, they don't seem to go. I like this actually a lot. Maybe even this. No, I like it better by, by his feet. Um, so I like this, but I don't I don't know if I like the boats. Way in for me. Okay. Now I need a sentiment. And I know which one I'm using. It is to see far is one thing. But I want to put it on. A piece of Yep, I'm going to put it on this. And we need basic black. Oh gosh, I'm doing way too much for this. No, I'm not. The person I'm giving it to is really special. So, okay. 
So we're going to, I just am stressed that you guys are bored of me. I'm not going to worry about it. If you're bored, you'll go away, right? That's how it works. Okay. So I'm going to heat emboss this with white embossing powder. All right, cleaned that all up. Let's put this away. Now I have to heat emboss it. You're gonna have to deal with that sound for a second here. Sorry about the noise. The boats need to be in water and you don't have any on your card, so no boats. Okay, this is representative of water. So you kind of have to think outside the box here. This is like, the pond or the ocean. It's a kind of an abstract idea. Yeah, can't do both. I agree. Renee says can't do both. No boats. Everybody's like no boats, no boats, no boats. I agree. Look at the boats would be cute by themselves. Renee's right. They would be really cute. Look at that. Oh, now what do we do? Do we do boats or do we do the, the herring and the lily pad? <coughs> okay, let me heat emboss this. My, my embossing tool won't reach all the way over to where you guys are. Okay. I'm embossing, I'll be back in a second. Okay, so now I'm letting this kind of cool off. Put boats closer to the top, okay, like this. So we've got some say boats, some say no boats, some say boats on the inside, some say make another card. Some say love the boats. Um, Y'all are killing me. There's like no general consensus. <clears throat> the consensus I'm getting is I could do whatever I want and it's going to be cute. And you're right. I could totally just make another card for the boats. Okay. So here's what we're going to do next. I'm going to... Cut. this down just a smidgen so it's four and a quarter so I'm gonna cut it to four and an eighth and then did I do that right Whew. and then it's five and a half so I need I'm gonna do it to five and three eighths. All right, so that helps that situation along because it needs to fit on a card base. All right, here we go. So I like both, I like boats. Yes, do what you like. The boats look odd on the white. Okay, so I'm gonna go with this sentiment kind of sticking off the edge a little bit. I really love this little herring or egret, whatever you want it to be. And the sun up here. What do we think? I think that's beautiful. And then I'm gonna make another one with the boats, I think. <clears throat> The only other thing I want, and some of you are probably going to panic. Depends on if you like messy. And you know, I'm panicking a little inside at the idea of what I'm about to do. Just so you know. Just so you're aware that there's a little bit of panic happening in my, in my spirit right now. Let's get back our scrap.
Here it goes. Here goes nothing. Oh, that's not going to work. It doesn't have enough water. Nope. I felt like it's too much white. Okay, so now we've added some splatters and turned my fingernail blue, which is disgusting. Thankfully, I'm not too worried about it. I thought I had a paper towel. I do. Look, that's so gross when it gets all around your nail. Okay, so now we've got this extra added splatters. I feel better about that now. Okay, let's assemble, shall we? <clears throat> I am a sucker for dimension. I pretty much pop up stuff on everything I do. I have a hard time not adding dimension. So we're gonna add dimension. I have had the best time doing this with you guys. Seriously. Linda says I'm not doing it right if my fingers aren't inky. I agree. Wholeheartedly. There are some people who craft who cannot stand for their hands to have ink on them. Isn't that funny? And I'm like, the best part of the best part right there. So I'm just I'm gonna line I'm just lining it up so this little tiny bit pokes off the edge of my card. Let's get my egret on there, or my herring, whatever you want him to be. <coughs> so I got to do a little surgery here on my dimensionals because they need to be like half the size. So if you joined me yesterday, you probably can tell, I'm actually doing a lot better today. I'm not coughing nearly as much as I was yesterday. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra says, nice card. Okay. All you diehard friends are the ones that have hung out with me this whole time. You diehard stampers. Oh, for God's sake. Yes, I said it. Son of a preacher, man. Okay. There's that. Huh. My poor puppy. She's been stuck outside this whole time. She's crying. But I knew if she was in here, she would cause some sort of disruption. So I booted her, booted her out the dough. Okay. There's my herring. Let's get our beautiful lily pads. I'm not gonna pop them up. They're gonna be flat under her feet. And then we're gonna have the sunshine popped up. Cause why wouldn't a sunshine be popped up? <sighs> I'm cooking dinner, watching you create makes cooking more fun. Love it. Okay guys, there it is. How fun is this card? Love it. Love it. It will be on my blog tomorrow, photos and all, along with this video. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. If you need any Stampin' Up! supplies, please consider purchasing them from me. I would love to earn your business. You can click on the link in the description of the video, Shop Love and Stampin', or you can visit my blog for other inspiration at loveandstampin.com. 
today I have a fun video on there showing you how to emboss with frame lights. So you might want to check that out as well. Thanks for hanging out with me and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.